I, I thought I'd share in this video the actions I take most typically in Audio City so that you can save time um, not having to file through all the nitty-gritty of so many other videos that I've seen. Alright, so I have the project here with its other folder so that it'll work. I'm going to double click on it. And I've already, I think, edited this project, but I can edit it again, whatever. So, go to File. most common thing that I do is, um, well, actually edit. Go over to edit and delete. That'll be the most common. So to do that, you would left click on a section. And where I'm highlighting right now, by dragging the mouse cursor over, to the right, and then once I let off, I can go up here to edit, and on remove audio or labels, you don't actually click on it, it just shows up the next menu, and go to delete. Gets rid of that section. So I use that on both ends most commonly. Another very common thing I use, since I'm a pianist, and I do piano recordings, um, amateur piano recordings. I uh, like to use fade in and fade out under the effect menu. So let's say I want to fade in a section. I would just simply highlight again and go to fade in. And you can see it was changed to be a progressive uh, file visually there. And I want to fade out. It'll do just the opposite. And you'll see it get smaller as it goes right. All right, so those are the... I don't always fade it in and out. It's only if I need to um, make it smooth on the edges. Sometimes it's already smooth. Okay, so the uh, other thing I would do commonly is go to Effect. And I've messed around with settings on this board and gotten them to where I like them. It took me a while. Um, I got it just how I like it and I saved it and named it. And so all I have to do for any piece of music I record in the future is just hit OK because I had it saved already. Just the way I like it and it has the whole thing, or the whole clip already highlighted and it will go ahead and equalize the whole piece, just like that. It doesn't take very long, just depends how long your piece is. And if you want to generate silence, that's another thing I commonly use. Again, you're highlighting left to right with the mouse. Go to generate, and you can put in a time of silence, however long you want it to be, by highlighting. So those are the three things I use most often. The other thing I would also use from time to time is Amplify. They got this recording a little too light. Sometimes it distorts it, so you only want to use it once, I've found from experience. Um, after you've used it once and you keep amplifying, it tends to distort the recording. So let's say I want to amplify it five decibels. Just enter a five in, hit OK. And you can just do trial and error to figure out what maximizes. But you can see visually that the recording is nowhere near the edges. And I say edges, it's top and bottom right here. And I've got my cursor near the 330 mark up here. And so you want some margin between the top and the bottom of each part of the recording, the main line up above and below you want some margin. So um, as close as you can get it that would be the best if you don't have much distortion in your recording. Especially then that will give you the better recording. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else I normally use. I guess normalize I use from time to time to, to do just the opposite of amplify. Uh, it's 
bring the decibels down. So it's the same type of thing. You just hit OK. It highlights the whole piece if you want, and that's that. That's what I use most often right there. And honestly, there's not really anything else I use on an average recording other than over here on the left hand side. Sometimes I slide these back and forth. Say I want to have things just a little louder. It's really easy to just slide it up a couple decibels. And say I want to have my right mic or my left mic on my recording since I've used two mics a little louder than the other or a little more prominent would be the better word. Uh, then I might slide it to the right 10%. Makes the sound just a bit more stereo, you know, to where the keyboard or the uh, treble notes will be a bit louder on the right hand side uh, and say the mic on the left was closer to the bass notes. Uh, so that makes it to where I can uh, make the treble notes a bit more prominent or the bass notes, whichever way I want to go that way. Yeah, that's basically it. I mean, uh, what, in six minutes I gave you the basics of what I do. Now, of course, uh, I should also add that you can play your recordings right here on Audio City and pause them and stop them all right here on the left-hand side near the uh, left top. And the only other thing I might do is a slide the output volume over here back and forth according to how loud I want that and the mic recording level over here and yeah that's about it can't really think of too much else okay so to export let's say this was a finished recording which you know I just messed it up doing what I did honestly but let's say I want to export it to my desktop it's as simple as find the desktop, make sure the desktop is under save in and or whatever file folder I'm wanting to save to and then name the file and save and I had to do a little extra work to get what they call the file lane, L-A-M-E, lane so that I could export mp3 files and then here you would put in your name and all of that if you like that, which I'm not going to waste the time right now. And it takes, um, what is this, a four and a half minute recording on a fairly fast computer. It takes 20 or 30 seconds to export it. And it's out to the desktop and it's a finished recording. And here it is. And then I can immediately bring it up on Windows Media Player or Media Player Lite, whatever I choose. Alright, well that's uh, that. Hopefully that streamlines things a bit for you so that you don't have to wade through um, really long tutorials on Audio City. And if you're a pianist like me, you'll appreciate this most definitely. Have a great day!